a little thought here tonight that I, I, I think everybody in here is wanting to know. The, the older you are in here tonight, the more you're going to like and want to hear this message. The younger you are, the less you're going to realize you need it. Because young people think you're invincible and you're never going to get sick and you're never going to die. But as you start getting older, you start thinking, man, it may be about over for me. And, and those, starts, those thoughts start crossing your mind. And uh, you never know. So here we go in Proverbs chapter 10. Look at verse number uh, 27. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible said, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now, I want to preach tonight on the subject, Five Ways to Lengthen Your Life. Now, nobody wants to die unless they are really in really, really, really bad shape. You can get to the point where you're in such pain and misery that death would be a relief. And it does get like that sometimes. But on average, average speaking, nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to live. We are built. It, it, we're, have me on sound, man. Somebody holler at him back there. Amen. Uh, turn this down here just a little bit. Uh, you, uh, you don't want to die. There's something in us. It's instinct. Matter of fact, you know, you have uh, the three major instincts you have, and you can't help it, are self-preservation, uh, self-propagation, and, and self-gratification. That the take care of this flesh. It's built in us. It's built in us to uh, watch out for ourselves, to preserve, to keep ourselves from getting hurt and dying. We'll fight it. It's built in you. Animals have that. Animals have the same thing. A dog will, will, will scratch, claw, bite, cats will, to keep you from killing them. They don't want to die. And then self-propagation, the, the, the desire to reproduce your kind is a natural built-in instinct, and self-gratification is. That's the three main instincts you've got and to make this flesh comfortable and give it what it wants and needs. Tonight we'll talk about uh, the way you can lengthen your life. Now, you might, uh, you might say, well, Brother Danny, I've heard of old George Burns, and he lived to be 100, and he is a blaspheming, mean as a devil. I know there are exceptions to the rule. What I've read to you tonight in the book of Proverbs is a general rule. You've got to understand, Proverbs are not promises, pro always. Proverbs are principles. And there's a little bit different in the principle and the promise. Uh, most of the Proverbs are saying that, as a general rule, this is the way life goes. And as a general rule, the wicked, wicked die early and the righteous live longer, happier life, as a general rule. And that's a fact, as we'll see here tonight. And I want to give you five Bible ways that you can lengthen your life. You say, I want to lengthen my life. I want to, no, you don't. Now, you, if you had to face death tonight, every one of you would do anything you could to stay alive. Uh, I, you sure would. It's, it's built in you. You can't help it. So let me just give you this little lesson here this evening. And uh, uh, you, 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 you go there. You, I've heard people say, well, I'll exercise. I'll, I'll take vitamins. I'll, I'll go have my checkup. Make sure my blood pressure ain't high, my cholesterol, my triglycerides, and all that stuff. And, I, and, th and that's good. That's good. You need to know that kind of stuff. You need to watch your blood pressure. You need to, uh, uh, you know, you need to keep all that stuff in your. But that's no guarantee you're going to live. You go out there, car run over you tonight, uh, or something happen. A, 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 bl a, a blood a vein aneurysm, a blood vessel b a burst in your head. It can happen any time to anybody. So basically, there's five promises in the Bible, and the first one is in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. And the Bible said there in Exodus 20, verse 12, that we honor our father and our mother. Ain't got nothing to do with going to the doctor. Has nothing to do with blood work or triglyceride test. The Bible said, 
Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that thy days may be long upon the earth. Now, that's very simple. All you kids look up here at me tonight, it's very simple. You want to live a long, happy life, you honor and respect your mother and your daddy. You honor them. Whether, they, whether you think they deserve it or not, you honor thy mother and thy father. I realize that some of you here tonight have a little resentment towards your parents, and I understand that. I understand that sometimes it's that way. But you still must honor them. I, I, I'll give you an illustration. I heard about this ancient city uh, some time ago, and it was way back in the thousands of years ago, and, and uh, they let these two brothers, the, the, the people who come in to conquer this city, let these two brothers go. And they said, we're going to let you go, and you can take anything out of this city you want. Uh, the gold, the silver, anything you want out of this city, you can take it. And one brother went and got his aged mother and picked her up. The other brother got his dad, and they carried their mother and their dad out of that city. Now, God will honor that kind of mentality. I don't say you, we always don't agree with our parents. Sometimes our parents, sometimes your parents may be of a different faith or no faith or some weird religion or something like that, and you disagree. But you still must honor thy father and thy mother. I heard about a man uh, not far from here who got truckloads of wood and sold wood uh, for a living. And his aged mother called, and she was uh, freezing, and he charged his own mother to take a load of wood over there and made her pay. I've heard, now, now that ain't right, and you know that ain't right. I mean, you've got to live, I understand, but listen, you can't do your mama like that. I've heard of people say, Mama, you don't, I don't want to go. Mama, hush. Mama, I don't care what you think. Mama, I'm going to do what I want to. You don't do your mama like that. I, I never, I never in my life, in my meanest day, never told my mom to hush, and I never told my daddy to hush, or I wouldn't be here to, to, tell, to preach to you tonight. He would knock me in the next week. Uh, he didn't know. He didn't know uh, how you're supposed to. My daddy wasn't trained. He didn't read James Dobson's books on child rearing. He didn't know know how to read. But I tell you one thing. He knows how to make you straighten up. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you right now. And buddy, I honored and revered my my daddy, my earthly father. You must honor your father and your mother. You you kids in here tonight. When you're 14 years old, you think your mom and daddy are the dumbest people in the world, don't you? Don't you think, boy, my mom, my mom, I went to school with boys and said, my old lady, my old man want me to, and I never did say that. I don't think I ever said that in my life. I didn't want to call my mom and dad the old man and the old lady. Something in me, I was scared. I think it'll come back to you. It'll come back. On. I don't, my, my daughters had better not call me their old man. Or I'll call them the little brats. Amen. Uh, and and, and I'm gonna tell, listen, that, that, your mom and dad, that's not the old man and the old woman that honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen. Amen. You see them little ones in there? Y'all, you ain't going to want them one day to be calling you old woman. Uh, so uh, you better honor thy father and thy mother. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the first way to, to lengthen your life. Number two. Let me, number two. Isaiah chapter 38. There's a man in the Bible by the name of Hezekiah. And uh, this man, Hezekiah, he got sick. And listen to this, and he got sick, and God told him, he said, you're sick, buddy, and you're going to die. God said it. He had a few hours to live. And you know what the Bible said he did? He turned his face toward the wall, and he said, dear God, please, would you help me? Listen my day. He humbled himself before God, and the Lord said, all right, since you've done that, 15 years. I'm going to give you 15 more years for that. The second way to lengthen your life is to humble yourself to God. The dumbest thing you can do is be some kind of a smart aleck and say, I don't care what you do. Y'all, I'll live the way I want it. That's the dumbest thing. The best way to live a long life is say, dear God, whatever you want, I'll take. God, I ask you to have mercy on me. Please help me. Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. You want God to bless you? Stay humble. Stay low. The big shots get hit with the bullets start flying. Stay down, 
people. Stay down. Stay down. You ain't got nothing to be proud of. I ain't got nothing to be proud of. I'm a dog that ought to be in hell tonight. We ain't got no right in the world to look down on anybody. Uh, I, I, like you, was shocked this week when uh, that old wicked comedian, Kathy Griffin, you seen that thing that she did about uh, the president holding his head up? And I don't care who the president is. You ain't supposed to do that. Uh, no, nobody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter. And they all laughed in Hollywood. And Hollywood said, oh, that's, that's cool. That's funny and everything. And you know what? When I first seen that, I wanted to take my fist and just, bam, punch her in the nose. That's what I wanted to do. And, the flat, and then I got to thinking about it. And I got to thinking about it. And she came on and apologized. And I, I don't think her apology was much, but she did. And for a, for a split second, I, I told Kelly, I thought, you know what? Uh, you know, I kind of feel sorry for that poor woman. I really do. She don't know God. She don't know how much Jesus loves her. She don't know the truth. And look, you know what? I thought, I, I, I deserve the ha- same hell she does. I do, and you do too. We ain't no better than she is. We're not, people. You're no better than the worst person in the world. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I tell you, glory to God, I'm going to stay low and say, Lord, I don't deserve it, but I sure would like to live if you want me to. And God looked down and gave him 15 years. Ain't that something? The Lord give that old boy 15 years. You know why? Because he was humble. Because he was humble. You can get help from the Lord when you're humble. Number three. You want me to show you another way to lengthen your life? Deuteronomy 25 and verse 15. And that is being honest. Being honest will help you to have a long life. The Bible said have a perfect and just weight. In other words, treat people right. That thy days may be lengthened. Amen. Now I read up in Delaware, up north they got them toll bridges. And in them toll bridges uh, years ago, long time ago, uh, they, uh, they uh, I, I you know, always wanted to say what would happen if, if nobody's working here or if you go through and you ain't got a dollar or two dollars, what do they do? And they take a picture of your tag or something and they nowadays... But uh, back then, somebody figured out an honor system. And they was going to have this honor system. And they said uh, in, uh, in 20 days, they gave out 26,000 envelopes for people who went through the toll bridge and said, 26,000 envelopes, you can send in your money. 582 people sent it in out of 26,000. 582. The 25,418 looked out and said, uh, I, it's not important. That's not important. That's a bunch of junk. I don't have to do that. Or just threw it in a trash can and forgot about it. Now, I hate to say this to you tonight. You've heard me preach on stuff like this before, and I, I ain't trying to be a smart aleck or nothing, but we're supposed to be honest in our dealings with people. Honest. And, and stealing a dime as far as you're concerned, is same still a thousand dollars. Now it might not be. Oh, it ain't that much because that person they don't miss a dime unless they do a thousand dollars. But the act of taking something that ain't yours is still wrong. Ain't that right? Sure is. I, and I know I'm ridiculous on that. I, I go to the car wash. I'm not bragging because I'm a dog. I'm just telling you, I'm scared. I'm scared. I go to the car wash, and I stuck a, a, a quarter in there, and a bunch of quarters came out, or a couple quarters come out. I just leave them laying there. You say, why? Because they ain't mine. Or a drink machine. Lord, it's getting quiet in here this evening. You say, well, what about all them times it took you money? Well, I guess you could reason like that a little bit because it has took my money before and didn't work. But I, I always thought, I always, you know what that scripture, as soon as I stick money in a machine, and I think a devil lets it happen to me sometimes uh, just to just see what you'll do, or the Lord won, and that money comes out, and that scripture comes to my mind, it said, thou shalt not go to the corners of the field, but leave them for the poor. When they, when they plowed them fields, they went around in a circle, and they left the corner of them, them, them uh, 
fields for poor people. I know probably somebody on crack will get that. Uh, but I, I, that might be, But that's between them and God. Amen. I, I just think, Lord, it ain't mine, I ain't taking it. It ain't mine, I ain't taking it. I, I, I'd feel bad about it. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, uh, you must, I tell you, I, this man told me, he said, uh, man called me one day, uh, back several years ago when we had that hail storm, and he said, Danny, he said, uh, you need some money? I said, sure. He said, well, I can get you something. I said, okay. He said, uh, you got any hail damage on your roof? And I said, tell you the truth, I don't know. It's, I don't get up there on my roof and walk around. Uh, uh, when I, and I had that metal roof at that time. I got a shingle roof now. But uh, he, said, uh, he said, if you got a dent in your roof, he said, I can get you a new roof put on, and your insurance will pay a lot, and I'll do it cheap, and then you'll split the money. And I said, well, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it ain't leaking or nothing. And it's way up yonder. You can't even see it. Really, it ain't hurting nothing. He said, uh, he said well, I can get it for you. And I said, brother, I tell you, honest to goodness, that sounds a little bit crooked. He said, no, it's not. That's what insurance is for. Now, there's two ways of looking at stuff like that, people. And really what he was saying technically was right. That is what insurance is for. But that's exactly why it's the doggone high. People use it when they don't have to. You can't just suck an insurance company dry. They're going to they're gonna cancel your insurance. And I said, one of these days when I really do have something bad happen, I want my insurance to work. And if I turn in, every time, a, every time a bird hops across my roof and use the bathroom on it, if I turn that in on my homeowners, they're going to cancel me. And just so I can uh, uh, cheat them out of a little money. And he said, well, that's why you pay your premiums. Every-. And I agree. There's two ways of looking at that. And I told him, I said, brother, something about that just sounds shady to me. Let me tell you something, people. There's some things that you can do that ain't on paper wrong, but be careful about being shady. Be careful about cheating people. Don't, don't sit there and get mad at me. It'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. God's in heaven. He's watching how we deal with people. It will come back to you. Amen. It'll come back to you. The blessings of God has been on my life every time when I treat people right. If you sell them a car, tell them what's wrong with it. Amen? Amen? If, if, you, if, you, if you're in some kind of deal, then I'm, not, I'm, not trying to be, I'm not trying to fuss it. There's nothing wrong with being a good businessman or anything like that. But be honest. You want to live a long life? Be honest. I like this story about this guy. He's 99 years old. And this reporter was interviewing him. 99-year-old man. And this reporter came over and he said, Sir, I'm just amazed. You, you, you're 99 years old. He said, Do you think I can come back and interview you next year on your 100th birthday? And that old man looked at him and said, well, I don't see why you couldn't. You look like a healthy young man to me. And that old boy said, he said, I'll be here. I don't know about you. But I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll be honest, if you'll be honest, God will bless you for it. In 1924, uh, uh, Liberty uh, Insurance Company uh, sent out 100 letters with money in them that, that was, people didn't, wasn't supposed to get. 27 of them returned and said there had been a mistake made. In 1971, they did it, and only 13 did it. You see how more dishonest people get as time goes on. Like a preacher said one time, he got up and he started preaching to his church, and he said, uh, Ananias and Sapphira stole from God, and they held back the money, and they lied about it, and they was in cahoots, and they, and they, and they cheated the church, and cheated God, and God killed them. Somebody said, boy, what if God did that now? And the preacher said, I'd be up here preaching to an empty house if God did that now. God did that now. There have been dead people all over Burke County this morning of people who act like they give their tithes when they really don't. Amen. Go to the beach with your tithes. It ain't no wonder you can't get nothing away. It ain't no wonder you can't feel God's blessings on you. It ain't no wonder you're frustrated and miserable, can't enjoy church. You got to be honest. Get your heart right. God will bless you for it. Number four, number four, Proverbs 28, verse 16. You want to prolong your life? Hate covetousness. Hate covetousness. That's right. They asked a man one time. They said, uh, they asked these three men, they said, uh, uh, what would you do if you found some money that ain't yours? And one of them said, I'd give it back. Next one said, 
I'd keep it. And the next one said, I'd really want to keep it, but I'd pray and ask the Lord to help me. He said, you're the only honest man out of the three. He's being honest about it. Amen. He's being honest. That's right. In the Air Force, years ago, when you joined the Air Force, you'd have to say this, quote, I will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate anyone who does. Young people, listen to me. If you tell the truth, you won't have to worry about repeating it or changing your story. Now, one of the hardest things, how many of you in here this, this evening are under 21? Would you raise your hand if you're under 21? You know what the hardest thing for y'all to do? You be honest when your parents ask you, where did you go? What did you do? What was you listening to? What was you up to? I'm not talking about in your mind. I'm talking about really 21. All right, put them down. It's a whole church. Hey, you know what I used to tell my girls? Remember, they'd say, did you do this? No, you tell the truth. All you young people listen to me now. Won't you parents agree? The punishment's a whole lot easier if you just tell the truth. Amen. Just tell the truth. You say, I'm scared I'll get in trouble. You're going to get in a lot worse trouble because we always find out anyway, don't we, mamas and daddies? So God will somehow or another let them find out. One of my girls over there, I won't say which one. Not the oldest. Not the middle one. But I'm not going to say which one. One time, and she don't even know I know this. I don't know if I've ever told her. She was supposedly spending the night with a girl from school. And I'd bought her a Volkswagen Jetta, and for some reason... At 3 o'clock in the morning, they had to go to Ingalls. Had to go to Ingalls at 3 o'clock in the morning. Daddy lives way down here in Hoppy Tom. Ain't nowhere in the world. He'll never know this. Next day, I was somewhere said, Danny, uh, you, you all right? And I said, I, said uh, I heard on the scanner last night. Always some nosy redneck Marion got the scanner on. Ain't they? Ain't they? There's more redneck people in Marion with scanners than anywhere I've ever seen in my life. I get they ain't got no life, so they sat around all night and listened to that scanner. Oh, I know him. I told you. And told me one of your daughters got pulled over by the cops. Two o'clock in the morning going to Ingalls. It just so happened that her future husband lived right behind Ingalls and Marion. To this day, she's never said that's where she's really going. You got one last chance to tell the truth right now. Are you telling the truth? Ah! <laughs> and I used to tell them, when, when they get in trouble, I'd say, remember that time y'all had something on the computer and, and Jack come over and cleaned out the computer and I'd been fussing them. They'd been listening to Britney Spears on the computer. And I said, who's been listening to that music on this computer? Not us, not us. I said, don't you lie to me. Don't you lie. And you know what I tell them? I always tell them this, and now they used to do it. They've done it to me, and now Marty's doing it. I'd say, you say unto the Lord. See, in the Bible, it says, unto the Lord. God, strike me dead if I'm lying right now. Under the, okay? I ain't going to say that. Next time you're going to say, say, unto the Lord what they said in the Bible, under the Lord, I was not listening to Britney Spears, Daddy. And that was, I mean, <laughs> under the Lord. Uh, yeah, that'll work on them, buddy, that under the Lord. Listen, if you can lie saying under the Lord, you a mean, wicked individual. You're crazy. I, everybody, everybody will wiggle. Everybody, all kids will wiggle when they get caught and try to dodge and, well, you know, you know. But when you, you, but you pin them right down, it's hard to lie and say, under the Lord. Be honest. Be honest. If there's one thing people ought to know is, you'll tell them the truth. How many of you have ever told a lie before? I have. Man, I felt awful. I felt awful. 
I said, oh, God, I am such a sorry, good-for-nothing, low-down person. I ain't even man enough to tell the truth, God, for you. It feels awful. You feel dirty when you lie. It feels so much better just to tell the truth, get it out, get it over with, and you ain't wondering if somebody's going to find out all the time. You know what the blessing of being saved and filled with God and being right with God is? You don't have to worry about getting found out all the time. Everybody done found everything out. Ain't nothing else. <laughs> Amen. That's a blessed way to live, buddy. You don't have to hide all the time. I know people, every time my phone rings, oh, gosh, I thought that was him. I thought that was, I, thought, I told him not to call when she's here. Uh, and walk around and live like that all the time. Every time a cop, be, oh, there's a cop behind us. Hide it, hide it, hide it. Hide it. There's a cop. That's what a way to live, man. <laughs> I mean, just be honest, be straight, and you don't have to worry. I know, I, know, I, I get like that when I call. I mean, I ain't even doing nothing. Uh, I mean, I ain't drinking. I ain't smoking nothing. I ain't doing nothing. And still, when the cop gets behind me, I'll start weaving like this. I can't go. St- I say, oh, Lord, don't let him get me. Oh, and I ain't even getting nothing. I've been pulled over for driving drunk twice, and I ain't never drunk nothing in my life. I was in Florida one time trying to figure out where I was at and reading the map, and I was all over the road. Here was a light behind me. A cop came up. He said, Mr. Castle, you been drinking? I said, no, I'm a preacher. Like, so what? You know? He said, he said, <laughs> he said you was all over the road. And I said, well, I'm trying to read this map. can't figure out where I'm at. And he said, <laughs> he, he let me go. But anyway, you know what? It did feel good to say I wasn't drinking. I was weaving, but I wasn't drinking. Thank God. Be content with what you got. Honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. Number five. You know how to make have a long life? Obey God's word, y'all. Deuteronomy 440. Thou shalt keep him, and you'll help him. He'll live a long life. His statutes, that it may go well with thee and thy children, and bring thy days, uh, and, and, and lengthen your days. Certain things shorten your life. And certain things lengthen your life. He that being often reproved and hardened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. You get killed at a young age. You get out here and act a fool and get drunk. And right, you'll get killed while you're young. I don't care how many of them cool kids at school get high and smoke dope and, and weed and, and drink and everything. You'll get killed when you're about 25 or 30. Amen? There's certain things that will shorten your life. Living after the flesh. The Bible said in Romans 8, 13, if we live after the flesh, we shall die. They done a study of rock singers, and they said rock singers die average age 36. Average age of death, 72. Psalm 55, verse 23 said, Wicked men shall not live out half their days. Ananias and Sapphira come to church that morning. Oh, they were so right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Peter, we have brought all our money and and we sold our land. And Peter said, "Uh, I believe you're lying, ain't you? Oh, no, we're going to give it all to the church. Putting on a big act. And, and Peter said, man, you, you're lying. Bam, God knocked him dead right there. That was an example for us not to do that. You kids here tonight, I'll give you some good advice. Tell the truth. When you get caught, tell the truth and man up and own up to what you did. Get it over with. And it won't be in the back of your mind. If you lie out of it, you'll have to tell another lie to cover up that lie and another lie to cover up that lie and you just start living, you're just a big hypocrite. Then you go to church and you're miserable and you can't get a blessing. You're better off just to take your punishment and get it over with. Take your whipping. Five ways to live a long life. Let's stand. Bow our heads to prayer. Amen.